Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Well, I'm obviously not out in the vegetable garden today. I'm in our front yard because a lot of people have been saying, we want to see your flower gardens. And I do have flower beds in the backyard, but the front ones are really special to me. So I thought what I would do today is show you them at an early stage in their growth because we have had the coldest spring on record in the last 100 years. I swear I did not make that up. So things are moving a little bit slowly. But then what I thought I would do is give you another update in maybe two or three weeks and then another update after that because they're always transitioning and there's going to be so many beautiful blooms to see. I'll bet you're probably wondering what this amazing shrub is. This is a Korean spice viburnum. And as you can see, it is blooming its little heart out this time of year. Look at all the flowers. They are absolutely gorgeous and they have a wonderful scent. The other thing that's blooming here is a Kwanzan cherry tree. So that's an ornamental cherry and the blooms are amazing. They're doubles and such a joy this time of year. Now I have a foundation bed sort of wrapping around the side in the front of the house and I wanted to just quickly show you that this is where half of my roses are. You can also see the last of the tulips blooming and what's beneath it is sweet woodruff, the ones with the tiny white flowers. There's also a type of geranium in there that I planted so long ago, I can't remember the name of it anymore. But it's really a very special little spot. It gets early morning sun, and that's pretty much it. One other thing I wanted to point out before we head out to the two front flower beds is this is a type of hydrangea paniculata, so a panicle hydrangea. The variety is vanilla strawberry, and below it is a bleeding heart, and again, a few of the sweet woodruff. They really spread a lot, but they're such a joy, so I don't mind that they do that. This is part of our big front flower bed. It's actually the very first thing we put in after we built our house and moved in. I wanted to have some flower beds going and we hadn't done the landscape yet. We didn't even have a sprinkler system yet. And so it was a tiny little rectangular bed, just about three feet deep. And as you can see, we've expanded it over the years. So the story I have to tell you about it is that we moved in one year, and about two years later is when we decided, okay, let's put in the sprinkler system, and we'll put in a lawn. And so the sprinkler system went in, and that company had hired somebody to do hydro seeding of the lawn. Well, of course, I already had this bed here, and it had flowers in it. And I came out while the guy was doing the hydro seeding and he was just going right across the whole flower bed. And it was very obviously a flower bed. It wasn't like there was confusion on his part. Well, back then, I wasn't as outspoken as I am now. <laughs> if I had had that happen just recently, I would have said something like, pick up every single one of those grass seeds. But no, I put up with it. And I'll tell you what, I have had horrible problems with grass in this bed. We have dug out sections of the bed. We've tried all different things. And every year I fight the grass. Gah. So anyway, it's just how it is. But I want to show you what I have in here. It's primarily perennials. I do poke in some annuals each spring. I also have bulbs that come up every year. And so it really is such a source of joy for me to see all these flowers. And then as I was mentioning, spring has been very cold, so there isn't a whole lot of anything blooming yet, but I will show you what is blooming. At the back of the bed, I have herbaceous peonies growing. There's some here, 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 and here. And those are going to be absolutely gorgeous when they start blooming. You'll notice there's a few white tulips in the foreground. And the interesting story is that we do not have any deer fence around the front of our property. 
except around the orchard, which is in the background. We have had deer problems for ages, and of course deer think that tulips are absolutely delicious. So it's amazing in part that there are blooming tulips here. These were planted years ago before I knew any better, and I just have left them in, and they usually get munched. Well, we have had no deer in our yard probably for a year, and I think partly that's due to the fact that there's more development going on in the area, and partly due to disease issues. So that's kind of sad. Even though I don't like it when they eat my plants, we do enjoy watching them, especially in the spring when the mamas have their little fawns. So I'm enjoying the fact that I have a few tulips blooming, and we'll see what happens. Now right behind the tulips are clumps of a Carl Forrester feather reed grass. That is one of my favorite ornamental grasses. And then the different clumps around the area are mostly bee balm, a few daylilies, and some small gloriosa daisies. There's also a few iris in there. And if you look kind of hard in the back, there's an oriental lily poking its head up. I don't know what happened to the other two that were in there though. That could have been caused by gophers or who knows what. In the second half of the bed, I'll just point out a few more things. We've got some daylilies, flocks here and there. You know, the flocks is wonderful, but it sure spreads. So I have to rein it back in every now and then. I've also got some variegated iris. That is the iris pallida that has a heavenly scent and purple flowers. I've got different types of bulbs coming up down here. More bee balm, columbine, quite a lot of that. A type of agastache or hummingbird mint. I don't remember which variety that is. I have to find the tag, but it's getting to be a little bit invasive, but I'm hoping it's going to be okay because the pollinators and the hummingbirds love it, so that's the priority here. But you can see there's quite a lot of clumps of wonderful plants coming up. Do you see these variegated leaves here with little flower heads coming up? And there's more back here. These are camas lilies or camassia. I saw these in England and fell in love with them. These are pale blue flower stalk. They're just gorgeous. And so that will be blooming soon and I'll have to make sure you see that one. Also, you'll notice these little flower heads coming up here. These are a type of allium. Do I remember which one? No. <laughs> But it's just so much fun to plant so many different types of things in here so that there's a lot of different flower colors, there's different leaf textures and shapes. And I think that's what it's all about. If I had to do this over again, I probably would do a better job of planting clumps of the same type of plant. So maybe like three to five of one thing and three to five of another thing and so on. I think that would have a better effect. But after 30 years, I'm sort of going with the flow. Now I promised you I'd show you any flowers that are in bloom. And as you saw, there haven't been many yet, but these are Spanish bluebells. Aren't they perky? What a gorgeous color of sort of a bluish purple. And here's something else blooming. That is a teeny tiny dwarf iris. That's something great to put at the front of a bed because it certainly would be hidden if you put it behind anything else. And then if you're curious about these strappy leaves, these are part of an allium plant. It's called Ivory Queen. It has a beautiful globe-shaped white flower. And I've got them poked in here and there too some other beautiful dwarf bearded iris. They're certainly taller than the white ones, but what a gorgeous color. This is one that was given to me by a Master Gardener colleague and friend years ago. I don't know if I ever knew which variety it was, but isn't it a beauty? Okay, on to the pollinator garden, which I am so pleased with. But one thing I want to point out very quickly, 
If you look past it towards the road, you're probably thinking, good Lord, she has a huge lawn. That must take up so much water, and she's not practicing what she preaches. Well, I would just like to clarify that that is called sheep fescue. It is drought tolerant. It does not receive a drop of water other than what Mother Nature gives us. So I just want you to know that we're trying to be very good about the amount of water we use in our landscape. Do I recommend sheep fescue? Well, maybe not for a lawn because it grows in these little tufts and so mowing it is quite the torture <laughs> because it just has created a whole lot of little bumps. But we do like that it just grows there without any water inputs from us. Okay, back to the pollinator garden. So this is its fourth spring, which I can scarcely believe. And it started out as our tended lawn that is watered. And we decided we wanted to take out a bunch of the lawn and turn it into something that would attract pollinators, beneficial insects, birds, and hummingbirds. And it has lived up to everything that we hoped for. So once the lawn was out, we added in some soil amendments and we started planting. One of the things that I started out with was a large packet of seeds from American Meadows that was for pollinators. And that has definitely lived up to my expectations because we get so many amazing bugs in here and they're so good for the environment. They help me out with damaging types of insect pests and so on. So all of those big clumps that you see are lupins. They were in the seed packet, but they took a couple of years to get going because they're more like a biennial where they start out the first year just getting established with a good root system and a rosette of leaves and then they send up the rest of the plant. They bloomed their little hearts out so this area will soon be filled with purple flower spikes. They are amazing and I definitely will give you a tour when that comes. Now if you go to my website susansinthegarden.com there's a little search window that's on the right hand side of each page and if you type in the words pollinator garden you'll find when we first put in this bed and there's even a video that goes with it. On that page there is a chart that shows the different types of plants that we put in here. So it's been a combination of drought tolerant perennials, native plants, milkweeds, and so on. So as I stand here looking, I can see some bee balm in here, some Gloriosa daisies, Siberian wallflower, sweet williams, Oregon sunshine, that's a native, some native milkweeds. I've got some red hot poker in here, that's really pretty. It just goes on and on, and this is such a beautiful garden. I'll definitely give you updates on this one. Here's an example of some Siberian wallflowers. And like I said, nothing much is blooming just yet, but I had to show you a little bit of color. Well, that's the tour for now. There will be so much more to see when everything is blooming. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy my lovely Korean spice viburnums. Ah, thanks so much for watching today, everybody. I'll see you next week. Happy gardening.